Hello folks, this is Ashwin joining you with a roundup of what's happening in our country and the little world around us. Without further delay, let's get going with the highlights. Have you heard about BrahMos before? If not, it's the supersonic cruise missile system developed via the robust Indo-Russian defense partnership. It is a two-stage, that is, solid propellant engine in the first stage and liquid ramjet in the second missile. So recently, Philippines, a country we should note is involved in a tussle with China with respect to the sovereignty over disputed areas in the South China Sea, decided to purchase the BrahMos missile system from India in a deal worth $374.96 million. This can give a great boost to the defense export ambitions of India. Further, the Economic Survey 2021-22 and Union Budget for 2022-23 was presented by Finance Minister Nirmala Sitaraman in the Parliament. Also, Kijadia Wildlife Sanctuary in Gujarat and Bakhira Wildlife Sanctuary in UP were recently added to the list of Ramsar sites. Wondering what are Ramsar sites? They are areas containing wetlands of international importance. Ramsar is a place in Iran where this treaty to protect wetlands was brought to fruition. So as we said just before, the budget was presented recently. So in this budget, a new scheme named Prime Minister's Development Initiative for Northeast was formulated focusing on the northeastern part of India. In the same vein as the PM Gati Shakti program, it seeks to upgrade the infrastructure as well as boost social development projects in the northeastern part of India. This will not only help in a total upliftment of an area otherwise affected by issues of connectivity, communication and infrastructure, but also help in giving a push to India's Act East policy that seeks to deepen India's ties with southeastern Asian nations. Coming to the sphere of international relations, Ukraine has recently been at the center of the geopolitical tussle between the US and Europe on one side and Russia on the other side. This is because Russia has amassed thousands of troops at the Ukrainian border sparking fears of an invasion. Russia doesn't want Ukraine to be a part of NATO and want assurances from USA and Europe to this end, which the opposite parties have been unwilling to concede until to this point. We should also note that pro-Russian groups have set up an autonomous administration in Donbass region of Ukraine and is involved in a tussle with the central government of Ukraine. Meanwhile, Burkina Faso became the latest country to experience a coup in Africa. This led to its membership being suspended by the African Union, which consists of 55 members. It was launched in 2002 in Durban, South Africa. Let's come back closer to home now. The K-Rail project in Kerala has come under a shroud of debate between economic imperatives, a fast, comparatively cheaper mode of high-speed transport and environmental concerns regarding alteration of Kerala's geography that has been subjected to the ravages of flood in recent times. According to the project proposed, a 529.45 km line will link Tiruvananthapuram to Kasaragod, covering 11 districts through 11 stations. When the project is completed, one can travel from Kasaragod to Tiruvananthapuram in less than 4 hours at 200 km per hour. On the existing Indian Railways network, it now takes 12 hours. Meanwhile, in another part of the country in Manipur, the first freight train entered Manipur after 75 years, extending rail connectivity to the northeast. Another cog in the developmental journey of the northeastern region has been recently set up in the form of the Shillong Technology Park. In the political sphere, the Supreme Court sought to put a check on the State Assembly's powers to suspend members by stating it should be limited to 60 days. Further, such punitive punishment should be limited to the current session. 
In Kerala, the government plans to amend the Lokayukta Act has also attracted attention. It seeks to give the government powers to either accept or reject the verdict of Lokayukta after giving an opportunity of being heard. Currently, a public official can be asked to vacate office if directed by the Lokayukta. On the economic side, the government has set up a National Asset Reconstruction Company Limited under the Companies Act. It will aim to absorb the non-performing assets of the banks, that is, the loans that banks are unable to recover and therefore give more room to banks to lend and allow economic growth via by ensuring a steady supply of funds. As far as the semiconductor and microchip sector is concerned, there is concern around the world that this essential technological component is being monopolized by certain countries on the lines of a technological war. In line with this sentiment, the Indian government has set up the Design-Linked Incentive Scheme, inviting applications from 100 domestic companies, startups and small and medium enterprises to set up FABs, that is, microchip manufacturing plants, as well as semiconductor making plants. The government will offer physical support of up to 50% of the total cost to eligible participants who can set up these fabs in the country. Considering the spurt of interest in bolstering the blue economy, the Maritime India Vision 2030 has been formulated by the Indian government to propel India to the forefront of the global maritime sector in the next decade. It envisions an overall investment of 3 lakh to 3.5 lakh crore international rupees across ports, shipping and inland waterways categories. Keeping in mind that the blue economy is the sustainable use of ocean resources for economic growth, improved livelihoods and jobs while preserving the health of ocean ecosystem as defined by the World Bank. That's all for now. We do have some more things to catch up with, but that will be for the next video. Until then, stay sharp and prep smart folks. See you soon.